Hey, it's Joe Lines from the Automator, and today I want to cover a couple of things to show you how to, uh, one, just, it's just the actual program we're going to be maximizing or bringing up a tool that's been shrunken down into the system tray. And I had found a couple posts in the forum that, that said they would do it, but they didn't work for me. And so I, I then was on a call with Sean Lalon, the author of Quick Access Pop-Up, and this is my second lesson for you is, uh, make sure you talk about what you're working on with other people because we, we think differently, right? And also just the vocalizing of what you're working on. So when John and I were working, you know, when I asked him the, the thing and he said, did you try, you know, looping over the windows and maximizing my style? You know, I tried that. The problem is when it's in the system tray, there is no window. And like, right when I said that at the same time, I could see the look in his face of like, well, wait a minute, maybe I don't have to close the program and have it go to the system tray. Maybe if I just hit the minimize button, it'll minimize the GUI and I won't see it. But when I want it, I can then maximize it. So I changed what I was doing. And the real learning point for you guys is to, again, this helped by talking it through with somebody else, I was able to solve my problem, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in the code. I'm gonna show you how to functionize is what I like to call it. Uh, my, my code, I'm gonna adapt it into a function that I could then use on other problems in case I have a similar issue. And I don't have to have complete rewrites of my code over and over and over. It's a great thing about functions. So let's jump into the code here. And first off, let me also say, you know, if you want to start learning AutoHotKey, I have Udemy courses that are, you know, available. And if you buy them from this link, you get a discount and I get more of the money. So it's a win-win. And so please, if you're interested, buy them there. Now, also please like this video. It really helps me a lot. So going into the code, obviously seeing lessons for us, it's something you want in a script like this, right? You don't want it running multiple times every time you launch it. So that's just default. My hotkey is Alt-P. Uh, so... Always good to end this, right? Right? Alt plus P will run this. Uh, now here, actually that is for later. Uh, let me go ahead and get rid of that. So here we are getting the status uh, of what GUI. It's this one. Let's see. So here it says window titles, push bullet pro. And if we come here, you can see it right here. Or I can click on it with like the window spy and bring it up, you know, the tool. I have a hotkey, of course, for it, but this tool, if we come in here to push bullet pro, we'll see this right here. That's what I would have grabbed, but, um, you know, you know, often I'll just type the name of what I think it is and that works fine, but this is a nice convenient way to do that. So we're going to get the status. We use when get to get the status and we're going to store that in this variable called when status. And then I just have them spaced out. So you see the consistency here. So this is an option we're going to get or a command in the when get to get to get the minimize and maximize status, is what I call it, win status. So it's going to return a number like zero, one, or I think minus one. And depending on what that is, we're going to do something. We're going to take a certain action, right? So this first says, look at for push bullet pro, and store the status in this win status. And once we have that, now let's do some conditions. And this is one line code. With we could all probably condense all this. Well. Let's see here, push when restore. No, um, I was gonna say we could put it in a ternary, but I don't think these when restores, these are commands, so we probably couldn't easily do it. We could still figure out a way to do it, but um, we wanna keep this simple, right? So anyway, this is the variable. And if it's a minus one, that means that it's minimized and we wanna restore it. We don't wanna, I don't want it maximized, right? I don't wanna take up the whole screen. I wanna restore it to that spot of however big it was. Uh, and this is again telling it, hey, do it for this push bullet pro GUI or window. If the status re comes back with a, either a minus one or a one, both of those are things I want to say, hey, you know what, let's go ahead and restore it. But if it's a zero, um, that's where I want to minimize it because the zero apparently is it's it's actually, you know, visible and I want to minimize it. So let me let me save this. First, we're going to just demonstrate it. So I'm going to run it to make sure it's running and then Alt P. So that, see, that brings it up. Now, if I hit Alt-P again, it'll minimize it, which you don't have to do, right? I, all my whole goal was I want to be able to hit a hotkey to bring up my thing so I can start. Um, and then if you don't know, push bullet for Androids, so you can automate sending text through your phone, which is really cool. Uh, this is their the app. They have an API, and we've actually built around their API as well. But it's pretty cool. It also allows you to copy and paste between your computer and your phone, which is really, really helpful. So anyway... Um, I, I like doing this a lot because I do a lot of texting just because I can type on the computer. So, all right, let's get back into the code. Now, I don't want, if I hit close, it's going to send to the system tray. Let me show you. So I close it. Now, look, my Alt P won't work. Why is that? Well, there is no GUI. It's, it's gone. There are no GUIs. If you looped over them, I'd have to come down here 
and click and then click this and that brings it up. I did test, I could relaunch the script and that worked, but it took like two and a half seconds to have it come up and that I'm impatient, right? So um, I didn't want to have to worry about that. Now let's start putting this. Now let's say we had another tool that was very similar to this. And we wanted the same thing. Look, we'd have to have, you know, all these lines of code in order to replicate that. And it just becomes messy. Like, well, hey, why don't we put this into a function? So let's start doing that. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is look for constants throughout your script. And when I actually, constants, but keeping in mind, it's something that might, you want to be a variable that might change if you apply it with different programs. So clearly this push bullet pro, that's something that we want to pass to it as a parameter. And that way, this is going to control. This is really the only parameter we probably want to be able to change. Now you could make it a little more complex and maybe decide on the logic, depending on what you're doing. But um, I'm going to use my program to decide the logic, and we're just going to pass this window title or whatever. Yeah, actually, well, window title is a good thing, and I think that's why I think I actually call it um, so. Window title colon equals. Now here, I'm, I so far I have I haven't really changed anything. I've just created a a variable called window title and push that value into it. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm adapting something to a function is baby step through it. Don't, don't do everything. Let's go ahead and swap this guy out with every push bullet. Uh, now the thing without a hotkey, because right now I can see this is text, right? So if I'm going to tell to look for a variable and because this was just looking for text, I know I need to change it to where I could wrap it that way, um, which is fine. I honestly prefer the one like this, um, I, this is how I do code, but either way is fine. And you know what, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna copy this because this is gonna be the same, right? So paste, paste, and paste. All right, save that. Now that, now I'm gonna relaunch it and I'm gonna hit apps P and hopefully I didn't minimize, let me double check, I might've closed, which is gonna be a habit I'm gonna have to get into. So alt P now see alt P is still working. So before I've actually brought it into a function, I'm testing this ahead of time. I'm testing it as I develop, kind of change one thing, test it, change one thing, test it. It's when you're a more advanced programmer, you can change multiple things. But even then I work with like Maestri and he's really advanced. He still likes to test things as we go through uh, incrementally. It's just so much easier because later you, you start troubleshooting and it's just a nightmare to troubleshoot. So anyway, now let's convert this into a function. So we want to be able to pass this window title and we've already done it here. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to leave that outside and I'm going to make up a function. Let's see, this is like window titler. No, um, no, this is a toggler. Yeah, 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 toggle visibility. Let's call it that toggle visibility. Now I don't want like the name push bullet in there or push bullet pro. Why? Because the whole point is to break it away from that program, right? Um, how many parameters? We're going to have one parameter and there's no reason not to use that window title variable we always use, already use. So window title. Now here I'm going to add my curly brace and I'm going to cut that guy and put it at the end. And technically it'll automatically, we could have had the return, but we're not really returning any sort of value. So I don't, I don't really need that. And I can just leave it at that. Um, I can even now I can get rid of this. So I'm going to save this. Now this here is defining the function, but we need to call the function, right? So actually what I like to do, cause I'm a terrible typist is just copy this bad boy paste. And because right above this, we have put it in a variable, this is going to call the function. And now look, we could even have a return here, right? Otherwise it's going to keep going, but it, this defining of functions doesn't change and it doesn't do, actually do anything. It's when you call it that an action gets taken. So I'm going to hit my hotkey and I'm going to hit alt P and with any luck, there we go. It's working. And now see if this was a different program name, all we'd have to do is to change this and look, we could even. Um, let's see, we could, we could do this. I'm going to bring this guy. I'm going to comment this out. Uh, that didn't work. I, I, maybe I hit copy, which is what I really wanted. There we go. So that, and I'm going to put this, I want the quotes. So here we go. Let me save reload. And now when I hit alt P, alt P, it still runs, right? So now I could easily duplicate this, put something else here and call, you know, have this work on a whole, let's see if this 
D colon slash videos. I don't know if this will work, but D colon slash videos. Uh, and let's change this to Alt V. And now Alt V. No, it's not working, but you get the idea, right? Because this is, um, oh, hold on. Yeah, it's on the other screen, but it wasn't working anyway. And, and it's not going to work with every program because it just depends on the program you're connecting to, right? Let's, uh, but you get the idea. The point was, A, talk to other people about your code because it's amazing what you can uh, realize after the fact that uh, you're thinking about the problem the wrong way. And by talking, vocalizing, it really helps you. Uh, the second one is, you know, once you solve your problem, you know, write it in a way that you'll go back and start saying, how can I optimize this to something I might, you know, reuse later on? So uh, it's a great, simple way to, you know, adapt what you're doing. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. I'll put this on a, um, I'll put a, a link to it where if you want to go grab it, I, I don't expect you to use this thing in, in specifically, but you still get the idea, right? That it's a simple way to allow you to, you know, I'm bringing up a GUI or I could be doing something else, but it's it's really adaptable to what you're doing. And if you're, again, new to auto hockey, check out the Udemy courses. Uh, they're basically like around $12 and you learn a lot in them. All right. Hope that helps. Cheers.